wouldn't use um, too many gimmicks to sort of differentiate them, like you know, one with a mustache, one without. That you know, that they would just look alike, and you would only be able to sort of differentiate them by their behavior and their attitude. And the way I kind of just came to that as an actress, I, I, I really leaned on the, the writing. You know, that Vincent is written in a very particular way. He's got much more pressure on him. He feels more responsible. He's more of a, he's more about the long game. Where Frankie is all about the moment. He doesn't, he hasn't thought about a consequence in his life, you know. And, um, and so thinking about those very basic kinds of attitudes, already makes me behave in a different way, you know what I mean? Like, Frankie's just, you know, he's looking at everything that walks by and he's, you know, about, you know, what he wants in the moment. And Vincent uh, is much more world-weary and, and, and looking at, you know, how he can hold things together. Has doing this show made you uh, think about watching porn differently? I mean, I, like every guy or friends who watch porn, like, do you look at porn differently now after doing this? Yes and no. I mean, that's one of the big, you know, one of the big issues that is still very topical today is, you know, uh, how porn is made, um, the unregulated nature of a lot of it. Um, my friend um, Rashida Jones came out with a, a documentary called Hot Girls Wanted a couple years ago, and I think the the main point I took away from that film is that these young women are not protected. They're not, they have no union. It's just completely unregulated and they, you know, they go out, to, in that case, they go out to Florida and they're just sort of ground up in a matter of months and then just dis discarded and nobody's there to, to protect them. There's no laws to protect them. And that is very much the case in our show as well. And so um, from that standpoint, yeah, I think I think there should be change. It does make me look at you know I I don't know if you believe me or not. <laughs> I've watched it in my day. I certainly watched it as research for this this show, but I don't watch porn. But uh, uh, believe me or not, uh, but uh, um, I have no moralistic stance against it but against it by any means. But in unregulated capitalism, I think that's one of the main points of our show. There's all these, these people, you know, the, the a select few that sort of come out on top and the rest are just thrown under the bus. So what, as a producer, what do you want the audience to take from this in terms of the misogyny that's going on? Because that's something that David was talking about, Maggie was talking about, the misogyny in our culture now. One of the things that um, David said is, you know, if I could just boil it down to, uh, you know, one thing I want you to get out of it, then there's no reason to watch the show. But it is definitely um, a very sort of um, uh, uh, multicolored, multivalent sort of uh, portrait of an industry where misogyny is deeply, deeply rooted into it. And there was a point David brought up uh, earlier today about how even when you have a show like this and you get to see the, the people behind this, the people underneath, you know, and maybe hopefully come to a deeper understanding about them and, and, and change attitudes and beliefs about, you know, this kind of trade or behavior or whatever, I just at least become more sympathetic. There's still this very dark, insidious thing about the sex trade where a lot of people are paying for it because they want to feel, you know, power over another person. They want that sort of um, disparity and dehumanizing kind of thing. And so to root that out is a very difficult thing to do. Um, but uh, I think I think this show has all, all the right intentions and, you know, you couldn't ask for a better group to, um, to, to sort of take this subject matter head on and, and do it in the right way.
happened? Well, this is kind of ideal. Like we had the time, we had the space, we had the money. I mean, that's what's so amazing about television these days is is I think in so many ways the really interesting adult content is moving to television and has been for a few years because you are given what you need to tell the stories you need to tell. So my process was like the ideal process. You know, I had time. I Did you have any reservations about taking this role as a mother because it's so graphic? Um, I had reservations more just in terms of being a human. You know, I, I wanted, I asked um, for a producing credit uh, after they asked me to do it because only three of the eight scripts were written and I was being asked to play a sex worker in 2017 which I think is a very delicate thing and I I didn't as much as I really wanted to do it and I wished I could just say yes I knew I had to have some kind of guarantee that I would be a collaborator that I would be a part of the storytelling and a part of what the what it was what what the piece ultimately said How will you explain to the girls when they're old enough well, look, I think um, we are making a piece about pornography and about a marginalized group of our culture. Do you not tell their story? I mean, is it better to push it under a rock? No. I mean, it's better to respectfully, honestly, as truthfully as you can explore uh, this group of people who I don't think very often has been uh, honestly portrayed in TV and in film. I also think it's a really interesting time, and it was even last summer, a really interesting time to be looking at misogyny, to be looking at our relationship as women to sex, power, our ability to make money, our ability to make art, our ability to be thinking members of this culture. And you know, even though last summer when we were shooting this, Trump was not yet elected, you know, we finished shooting a week before the elections and it was bubbling under everything everyone was doing and particularly now that he has been elected and there is a misogynist in office, I think it's an amazing time to be talking about a project and, and putting a project out which is in large part an exploration of misogyny. Smart exploration of misogyny, thoughtful exploration of misogyny. Alright, thank you so uh, So talk about this story, what inspired this? Uh, George and I got backed into it. We um. Yeah, we got back into it. We got back into it. We uh, we were working on Treme in right. New Orleans. Amazing. The, the assistant locations manager was a uh, an independent film producer at the time named Mark Johnson. He had been trying to make something about Times Square and the rise of porn, right? Pornography uh, for years. He had done a lot of research and had become connected to a guy who was a mob front. And he kept insisting that George and I come Do visit. Do the story, yeah. Come hear the guy talk. We have the tall feet to come get you guys to come. No, I mean, we go to New York to do our editing here. Right. So at one point when we were on a trip, we were like, oh, okay. You know, he was so persistent. We thought, let's give it an hour. Right. And three hours later, we were like writing on cocktail napkins. You know? That's how ha the magic happens. So from he there. To, to describing a world that it felt like we needed to do something. Yeah. Right, because people really even have seen the 70s, even the 70s New York City, Times Square, not something you really seen so much. Uh, talk about creating that atmosphere and the, the words and the things that people said and people did. And well, you got to do a lot of research. Um, it's before my time. I was 11 in 71. But you do the research. You look at all the contemporaneous film. You look at documentaries. Um, you read all the books. And then you talk to as many survivors as you can find. And, uh, and then you sit down and you write. And you hope you get most of it right, or, yeah. or enough of it right. How did you rope in James and Maggie into this to an amazing talent? And showed, showed them the scripts. The scripts were strong. Yeah. And we showed them the scripts, and they got it right away. And uh, listen, it's getting easier and easier for television to bring feature level people it in really because, because the, the studios are so bankrupt of, of real opportunities to be actors. Right. You know, you can't get an indie film made so easy anymore, and you know, not everybody wants to do one cartoon flick after another, one comic book flick mm. after another. So it's getting a lot easier for people doing long form to attract the best acting talent. It's amazing. Uh, your character is super feisty, super on point, like straight off the boat. Uh, 
Talk about why she's so informed already. Well, she's been doing this a while already, and I think she's been doing it enough to learn that the best way to get ahead is to act like she hasn't been doing it and sort of let the people think they're in control of her while she thinks she's in control of them. So, yeah, she was already on the street doing her thing in Minnesota, and she's just going, trying to find bigger, a, a broader audience in New York City. Talk about the script and what attracted you. What about the story intrigued you? Like, I need to be a part of this. Yeah, I mean, everything. The people involved, David Simon, George Pelicanos, um, the actors involved, James Franco, Maggie Gyllenhaal, and uh, the subject. It's such a, I mean, I think everybody is deeply, I mean, it's about sex, and it's about humans and sex and commerce with sex, and obviously that affects us all. Um, so to tell the story kind of in a very journalistic, from the ground up, like here's the story of how porn began, to me is very vital and very beautiful. And, and especially in the se se setting of the 70s, which has always been my favorite time period, it's kind of like a dream. Well, congratulations Thank tonight. You. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, I find uh, shows so compelling and intelligent. And so to be a part of a great show like this is just such a gift. And uh, HBO, that we're we're. And an HBO show and a David Simon George I mean, show. I mean, it doesn't yeah. get much better than that. No. Um, it's, HBO is obviously the pillar. Um, what other HBO show would you be on if not the Deuce? God. I know it's a hard That's one. That's a hard one. They have so many good shows. I know you got you got to pick one. Mm -hmm. give, me, give me one. I know you. I, I mean, I'd love to do Game of Thrones just because I feel like those characters uh, are fun. You know, it's a whole other world. Khaleesi's sister. Yeah, and yeah. like their hair, the hair and the, the costumes blonde. are amazing. And you have dragons too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like I love togetherness and I love the leftovers. I mean, there are so many great shows that I really enjoyed watching. But I feel like character-wise, definitely. Game of Thrones would be cool. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Um, talk about your character's arc this season and what we see her go through. Um, I, I think, you know, Abby's young and she's discovering New York and this world for the first time. And she's very curious and I think she's just, I, I saw her sometimes as like Alice in Wonderland, just kind of discovering her way and seeing what this world has to bring and what she has to bring to it and what she has to say. And um, yeah, she's, She's finding her voice. Yeah. Congratulations tonight. Have so much fun. Thank you They're so amazing. much. Thank you. Thank you.